Hello everyone, we are at iTron Inspire and I'm talking to Ty Roberts about network solutions. So let's start with like, what's your quick definition about network solutions? Network solutions, so this is, this is um, connecting devices, uh, intelligent devices that are taking measurements uh, for cities and for utilities uh, in order for them to have an understanding of what's going on in their environment. Uh, and as well, the very basics is, uh, is metering so that they can uh, actually invoice and bill their customers. Okay, all right, great. So. What's driving the adoption of more and more of these networked devices all out in the field? Is it like one thing that you see, or do you think it's a whole bunch of different innovations? No, it's a great question. Well, um, what I often say to people who ask this question about, well, this is, what are you guys doing in IoT? We've been doing IoT as an industry for, for 15 or 20 a years, yeah. for a very long time. Uh, so, I mean, the original uh, driver was uh, automating meter reading and uh, sort of taking crews off out of the field and saving money in that way. Um, but then also bringing in more data uh, to uh, you know, sort of drive more solutions based on intelligence to understand where there's outages uh, in the field and where to address those, uh, to remotely connect and disconnect people so you don't have to go out and send people out in the field to do that work either. Uh, and then create all sorts of new and interesting billing programs that incent people to save energy or reduce peaks, et cetera. Um, and sort of the city space uh, where we've really seen the adoption uh, primarily is in uh, measurements of water uh, as well as a measure or a control of streetlights. Uh, so those are really the, have been the, the first use cases that are driving forces. All right, cool. And then my favorite question is like, where are we headed? We had a super cool, keynote this morning, looking at the future, where do you see it? How do you yeah. see it? Well, what's really exciting, on the, it's sort of across the industry right now, whether it's, you're talking about electric, gas, water, or, or uh, municipal services, uh, it's this concept of, of intelligence at the edge of the networks and more autonomous action. Um, when you think about the electric space, especially where uh, there's you know, electric vehicles coming online and en masse within the next five years, mm -hmm. Uh, that's just an, a massive amount of new of new load that's going to be on the electric grid, and it's going to be mobile. So understanding where it is and where to charge uh, is difficult. And for utilities, understanding okay, where do I need to have um, uh, electricity available and ready to address this very mobile uh, sort of use case? Um, uh, distributed energy resources coming online, uh, and then looking in sort of the areas of, of water. Uh, of course, you can see this around the world where conservation of water and is, is becoming a much more of a priority in places where there's droughts. We see this in the United States and the, west, the western side of the country, for example. So uh, being able to measure is essential to being able to do, to conserve or do anything from that perspective. Right. Um, and then thinking about gas as well, um, uh, safety is the big driver in that industry. So having devices that are smart enough to tell when there's a condition that's dangerous in the field if there's low pressure or high pressure or high temperature, um, having devices that are smart enough to understand that and then to turn themselves or disconnect the service so to, to prevent a safety issue from happening. Um, and then of course, in, this, in the city space, uh, just all of us and citizens are getting more and more services served to us on our smartphones yeah. and have that expectation. Mm -hmm. Um, so cities being able to provide digital services to their citizens uh, in the form of uh, helping them find parking more easily, helping them navigate traffic uh, and just, you know, air quality and safety services as well. This is, there's just a demand uh, that us, that we are putting on municipalities to drive more. So yeah. all of that is really driving uh, uh, the need for more connectivity and especially the more need for intelligence right at the edge to you know, to address issues uh, that are really uh, immediate and there's no time to send information to the back office and crunch and figure out it's, it, yeah. it's, it's an immediate need. So yeah. it's very exciting. It's really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. And that one of the things that the futurist this morning was saying was like human behavior is actually what pushes technology forward. We see the possibilities, we push for that. I love how you explain that as well, thank you. Is there a utility that you think is really getting this right? Like is really pushing the envelope of Oh, that's of a super hard solutions? question because there's several. Um, okay. There's a lot of people doing really, the, really doing interesting things. Um, so just being in South Florida here, um, Tampa Electric or Tico is doing some amazing things right now. They're really the leaders in uh, the concept of, of implementing distributed intelligence within their, their smart metering network. So they're, they're the first who really deployed applications that are um, uh, using data on meters, so software deployed on meters to detect different uh, you know, safety conditions is where they started. 
and to notify uh, their field crews, this is where you need to go out and find an issue and mitigate it. So they're really on that the beginning of that of that journey, but it's it's exciting because they're they're really blazing a trail. Uh, another one that I wanted to call out was um, City Public Service in San Antonio, where um, where CPS and SAWS, uh, San Antonio Water System, have really joined forces and combined. Uh, so, so CPS Energy deployed a electric smart metering network several years ago, mm-hmm. uh, and now they're sharing that asset to read the water meters of the water department. So. It's a, it's a, it seems like an obvious thing, but that kind of collaboration between two different organizations is very unusual, but they're coming together to do that for, uh, for the citizens of San Antonio. So that's very exciting as well. Awesome. Yeah, that is very exciting. It has totally different departments, I'm sure, and yes. getting them to work together. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, thank you. That's Ty Roberts with ITRON. Thank you so much for thank coming you. to talk to My me. My pleasure.